Welcome to the Dusty Jobs Podcast from Imperial Systems. Industry knowledge to make your job easier and safer. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Dusty Jobs Podcast. We're so glad you could be with us today. Uh, I'm Don McCarkey, and uh, joining me today is Steve Bunyard from Reignite Hope. How you doing, Steve? Hey, I'm doing great. Looking, uh, looking forward to our time together here. Yeah, now you're joining us uh, via Zoom here. You guys are located out in California? Yeah, we're in the city of Gardena. We're about uh, 15 miles south of downtown Los Angeles. There you go. There you go. So we're, we're, we're on a little bit of a different time frame, but we've been able to make it work to, to meet up. So, um, so yeah. we're very interested. We've learned about Reignite Hope here at Imperial a little while back, and uh, we're just really are interested in what you guys are doing. But before we get into what Reignite is doing, I'd love to hear, let, tell me a little bit about Steve. Where, where, what's Steve's background? Where did you come from? And, and uh, let us hear a little bit about yourself there. Yeah, thanks, Donna. Yeah, uh, well, I spent most of my adult life uh, as a pastor uh, at a church here in Southern California, Rolling Hills Covenant Church, a fairly large church. And um, uh, when when I was about 10 years into that, uh, our church was doing a lot of work up on Skid Row in Los Angeles. We have a really high homeless population here in L.A. County. They estimate maybe 40 to 50,000 people a night. Are, uh, wow. are sleeping outdoors here in LA County. And uh, we were up there doing food and blankets and hygiene kits, kind of the normal stuff you do, and working with one of the homeless missions up there. And um, one day, uh, the, the matriarch of the Fred Jordan mission, a famous mission up there, Willie Jordan, came up to me and she said, Pastor Steve, what can we do so that we don't keep feeding the same people all the time? And I said, gosh, Willie, I said, I don't know. I think they need a job. I don't think they can get out of Skid Row without a job, but I, but I don't know what to tell you on that. Yeah. Our, our church doesn't do job training, but I, I did say, hey, I'll, I'll pray about it, though. So I, I did. I started praying about it. And uh, welding kept, kept weighing on my heart. I, I learned to weld as a young man. And, um, and so I, I was the only thing I could think of that maybe we could teach people that they could actually go get a job at. And uh, but it seemed like a crazy idea to me. But I, I kept praying and that yeah. kept that kept weighing on me, that kept weighing on me. So I thought, all right, I'm just going to go back to Willie and say, hey, what, what about if we start teaching people how to weld? She'll probably hate the idea. She's like 80 years old. It'll scare her to death. And then then I can let this go and get my life back. And uh, so I went back to Willie and I said, Hey, what do you think about this idea? Teaching people to weld. She loved it. Said, "I'll even give you a room inside the mission where you can start." And I thought, "Oh boy, here we go." And uh, so she did. She she vetted five homeless men for us, gave us a room. I went and bought a couple welding machines. We mm -hmm. jumped in and uh, it changed their lives. The thing took off. Everybody wanted in. Um, I was still on staff full time as a pastor and for the next 10 years would stay on staff um, as a pastor after that. But as Reignite Hope grew and grew and grew, it became harder and harder and harder for me to do both, um, both ministries. And so about a year and a half ago, I, I asked the church's blessing if I could step off of staff and devote my full attention to Reignite Hope uh, because I just felt like neither, neither one was getting enough energy from me. And I didn't feel good about that. And that, uh, so that was a year and a half ago. And so now I'm, I'm full focus, reignite hope, and it is just continuing to expand and grow um, like crazy. But that's kind of how reignite hope got started. Our, our name comes from the fact that we're coming alongside a lot of people who've lost hope. They don't see a bright future. The American dream means nothing to them. Um, many cases, they've had kind of a hard life. Uh, maybe been incarcerated, involved in gangs, dropped out of high school, got in trouble, and the hope is just gone. And so that's where we come in and come alongside them and um, see their lives change. Wow. So that, man, you really caught us up on a lot there real quick. That's great. So, <laughs> so Steve, when, I, when I'm thinking about this for you, um, like you said, you kind of, when you first got into this, you weren't 100% sure about it whether like what it was going to turn yeah. out to. 
So what was that journey like for you as you saw and met these people and um, just kind of what, what happened along that way? What, what caused you to go, you know what, this is an important thing and we need to kind of keep growing it. Did it grow on its own? Did you guys, what did it take to make it grow? Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's, it's it, God that made it grow because I, I don't know how to grow this and I still don't know how to grow it. Uh, we're, we're over 10 years now in Reignite Hope. And mm-hmm. but, you know, we saw the need, of course, on Skid Row. That's where we started. We're not on Skid Row any longer, but um, the need was there. And then when I saw what this did in their lives, the hope that it brought, the optimism about the future that this brought the excitement in their lives and then, and then getting jobs. I mean, real jobs with a real skill and, and good pay. Um, and, and, and it just spread like wildfire. We've never advertised the program at all. We've had as many as 500 people on our waiting list wanting to get in. Um, but it's word of mouth. When your life gets changed, you tell everybody you know about it. You tell your friends, uh, your, your mom tells all the other moms. Uh, and, and it just spreads like, like, I guess, like a virus, given that we're in COVID country, right? And all that. Um, and, and so we see that all the time. We just graduated 44 students here on Friday. They've already told all their friends about it and their moms are telling the other moms and we get calls all the time, wanting in, wanting in, wanting in. So, um, yeah, so that, that, that's how it grows, uh, is just by life change. Uh, when, yeah. again, when, yeah, when your life changes, you, you, you tell people. So if there's somebody out there and they're, they're in your area and they hear this podcast and they say, that's something I might want to be involved with. What makes someone qualified to be part of the program? How do you become part of the program? What's the qualifying factor? Yeah, good question, Donovan. So step one is go to our website, reignitehope.com. And just click on the apply button. There's an application you can fill out there. And, um, you know, we kind of ask ourselves uh, uh, three questions with with each applicant as we're kind of trying to filter through them. Uh, One is, um, does this person really need our help? Um, Can we help them? And do they really want our help? So we want to see motivation in their life. Our program is free. We've never charged for the training. Um, we We just believe in that. Uh, they're, they're going to pay us back by their hard work. They're going to show up and, and really put the effort in. So we're looking for folks that really need the help, really want to turn their life around and really serious about it. And then we just do our best to sort through the applications and take as many as we can. The ones we can't take, we'll put on a waiting list for the next class and uh, just try to touch as many lives as we can. And uh, we can't say yes to everybody, but we try to say yes to as many people as possible. And, and we're continuing to grow some of our capacity here that I'll talk about a little bit later, which is allowing us to touch more and more lives. We expect we're going to be able to train um, well over 200 students in 2022, maybe up around 300. Oh, wow. So what's the program look like? Is it a, is it a one week program? Is it a, a one year program? What, what does it look like if someone gets involved? What's, uh, what's the requirements? Yeah. So, hey, we, we love trade schools, so don't take this as a negative, but, but a typical trade school is going to be um, maybe a one or a two year program. Uh, we're dealing with folks that they need a job now and uh, we, we can't you know, they, they can't go for a one year, two year training. So we, we do a one month, five days a week, they'll get 120 hours of training. And in one month, they're ready for employment. And then we help them find their first job. So we've got wow. a full time, we got a full time person on staff that all they do is job placement. We have the American Welding Society comes in here at the end of the month, and test them. And upon passing their test, they are then a certified welder, real deal certification, certified yeah. welder and ready for employment. And so uh, it's just been great the way that, that we've been able to really microwave this and prepare them for an entry level welding job. And a lot of, lot of jobs out there, real shortage of welders all over the country. Uh, but literally in one month, we can get them ready. Now we do also offer mobile training uh, beyond our fixed uh, brick and mortar here. And in the mobile training, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so it, it sounds like the in-house program is a very, it sounds like it's an intense program. 
So if you're going to sign up, you, you got to be committed. Yeah, you do. You do. You got to be able to give it five days a week um, and, and, and really apply yourself uh, because that 120 hours is going to be intense. But yeah, uh, just think about it. In one month, you go from maybe being unskilled to having a, a, a really valuable skill in your life. Right, right. Well, that, that just sounds like really great. That sounds great. So that's kind of what you guys do, who you do it for. Now, what's, uh, you, yeah. you started talking about maybe a little bit of some other opportunities you have here uh, for not just at your facility, but outside of your facility. Yeah, yeah. So our demographic is a little bit of everything. Uh, we, we certainly have some homeless uh, in, in, our, in our classes, uh, folks coming out of jail, out of prison, out of gangs, a uh, little bit of everything, or just the working poor. They're just, they're, they haven't been in trouble maybe, but minimum wage job is all they have. It's all they're ever going to get unless they get some kind of a job skill. And uh, we're in our third facility. So we outgrew the first one on, on Skid Row. Um, the Los Angeles Police Department helped us get a second facility. We outgrew that one. And then we moved here to Gardena, our third facility, but then we maxed out this one. We can do a little over 200 students a year here. So we came up with uh, the thought of, well, maybe we could, instead of getting buildings everywhere, because people want us to come in different cities and even different states, could we take it mobile? So we, we, um, we decided to jump in and try that. So we built out an 18-wheeler that we can train 24 students at a time in the 18 wheeler. And we've been doing that now and we can travel around Southern California here. All we need is a place to park and we can go where the need is. We can go where the folks are that need help. And um, so we partner with different churches around Southern California to park in their parking lot, help them reach their community, help them bless their community. And uh, now we're at a high school um, about 40, 44 miles from here where we're training kids that they've identified as vulnerable. These are kids that they know aren't going to go to college. And if they get out of high school without a job skill, they're probably going to get in trouble. So they were saying, please, 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 would you guys come out here? So we're out there training them now uh, as well in, in the mobile center. And then the demand's so great, we're building a second one. We've got a second wow. 18 wheeler. Now, yep. Is the, uh, is the mobile center program the same as the, the in-house program or is there, do you have anything different about that? It is different. So in, in the mobile one, we're going to go two days a week for 10 weeks. So mm -hmm. uh, that has a little bit of an advantage in that if maybe somebody's got maybe a part-time job or, or a, some job that they can get a couple of days off and, and do the training, they don't have to give up their job if they have one currently. Uh, that, that helps with that. But doing the two days a week helps, helps keep us from having the trailer there five straight days because we need to move it around and meet as many needs as we can. So we can go to one location on Monday and Tuesday, go to another location on Wednesday and Thursday, go to another location Friday and Saturday, that kind of a thing. And then when the second trailer is done, that's going to give us more flexibility. But, um, but it's two days a week for, for 10 weeks. Same amount uh, of training. Cool. though. Yeah, but you more since it's less students in the trailer, you can actually get almost the same amount of students per week because you're able to move to different locations. Yep, yeah, it's, it's really, really been a tremendous addition to our program. And of course, uh, now everybody hears about it. So I've had calls from Atlanta and Chicago and Dallas and all over the place saying, hey, can the mobile come here? Can the mobile come here? So not to mention cities around us. So, um, so we're just going to, we're just going to see as, as God continues to grow this, how many we can touch with it. And I don't know how many trailers it'll be, but it's, it's one for the moment and two on the way. There you go. And, and speaking of that, it is, you know, sometimes it's a challenge for someone if they don't have their own vehicle or public transportation to get to where the training is to be able to go to them. Boy, isn't that just a great thing that you can do that and, and head on in there and, yeah, yeah. and help them out where they're at. Yeah, this high school 44 miles from us, you know, th those kids aren't going to be able to drive 44 miles to get to our building here. Uh, but we can go there and just park right in the high school parking lot and train them right there. And those kids are so yeah. excited. The principal told us, I've never seen these kids this excited about anything. And you can just see it on their faces. Yeah, that's great. So we talked a little bit about um, you know, how you guys got started in this and what you're doing, but 
Steve, why do you do this? Why are you taking this yeah. time to help these people? I mean, you could be, this could be a very profitable thing, you know, running this trailer around and charging people to do it. Why, why, why do you do it the way you do it? Well, we're a Christian ministry, Donovan, and it's our faith that drives us to do this. Uh, the Bible repeatedly encourages us to remember the poor and, um, and to, to be a blessing uh, to those in need. And so, uh, you know, when, when, uh, when Jesus was asked, uh, you know, out of all the rules, out of all the regulations, out of all the laws, what, what's the most important one of all? And he says, it's to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. But he says, the second one is this, love your neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. So this is how we show our love to our neighbors. Our neighbor is everyone, everyone that needs our help. And so uh, that's why we do it. That's what drives us to do it. Um, and our, our mission is very simple here at Reignite Hope. We do two things. We try to lead people vocationally toward a career and spiritually toward Christ. That, that's our mission. Uh, we know they need both in their lives. Their lives aren't really going to change if all they do is get a paycheck. And they're still thinking the same way, living the same way, making the same choices. But with Christ in their life, everything changes. Well, that, that sounds great. Um, I, I was just thinking more about this. And, you know, there might be some people out there that are listening. And they, they really like what you have going on out there. And they, they might be interested in trying to help you guys out, too. So I, is there a way if, if someone's interested, is there a way to reach out to you? What's the best way to to learn more about what you're doing and maybe get involved. Yeah. So on our website, again, reignitehope.com, we've got a volunteer button there you can click on. So that's one way. We've got really five ways people can help. Uh, one is people, of course, can can donate to us. We're Again, we're a nonprofit. We've never charged for the training. But we exist by the generosity of people that believe in what we're doing and give to it. So you can be a financial donor and uh, every dollar helps change a life. We've got four areas of volunteerism. Uh, we will literally take people who know nothing about welding. We'll train you how to weld so you can be a welding coach. That's part of what really makes our, our program, I think, uh, really successful. Again, in a trade school environment and because of budget considerations for them, you might have one instructor and 30 students. We've got one instructor and three students. So it's really, really fantastic. Uh, we're, we're, we've got such a great ratio there of instructor to students that we can really come alongside them and get their skills up much quicker. So if you want to be a welding coach, uh, we'll, we'll definitely jump at the chance to, to train you for that. Uh, we've got uh, the need for math tutors here. A lot, of our, uh, a lot of our kids just aren't strong in math and you need a little bit of math to be a welder. Uh, mm -hmm. Fractions, decimals, angles, things like that. Uh, how to read a tape measure. Uh, we've also got resume tutors that help our students get their resumes together and, and coach them a little bit on interview skills. And then we've got a lunch program here where it's mostly um, small groups from different churches in the area that will come and serve lunch to our students every single day. That way they don't have to bring lunch. They don't have to worry about if they don't have money for lunch or anything like that uh, right here on the premises and at the trailer. Uh, lunch gets served every single day. So those are all areas people can help um, and, 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 and be part of the team, be part of the team um, and, and join our mission, join our mission, whichever one of those five areas resonates with you. Come, come and join our mission. Now that the way they would do that is through your website. Yep. Yeah. What's the, what's the, what's your website address? Yeah, it's reignitehope.com. And if you just click on volunteer, there's a little space to type in there and say, hey, I, I'd love to do the lunch program or, hey, I, I want to learn to be a welding coach or whatever. Just type it in. Uh, if, if you say, hey, I can't do any of that, but I can give, there's a donate button on the website. All of mm -hmm. that helps change lives. So you can find that at reignitehope.com. Reignitehope.com. Great, and you can great. see on there some of our student stories and uh, you can see, get, get a real firsthand feel for what our program looks like and what it's all about and how life changing it is. We've got a bunch of student stories on there that you can watch um, on video. And, um, and, and I think you'll be really, really blessed to uh, hear our own students in their own words tell what this meant in their lives. 
Well, that's that just sounds great, Steve. We uh, we here at Imperial really appreciate what you're doing. We uh, we like the work you're doing, and, and we're glad to be uh, trying to help you out as we can here. And uh, if, if anybody out there's listening is interested, uh, please reach out to Steve, and, and he'll get you involved. But um, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to share a, a link to your website in the this podcast or on the YouTube page so people can can get there that way. But um, just uh, I. We're looking forward to, to seeing how you guys grow and what you do. But uh, I just want to say thanks again for coming on. And uh, yeah, that's it. Do you have anything yeah. else you want to say? Oh, just thanks, Donovan. And again, uh, if, if, uh, if folks listening to this happen to be folks that pray, just keep us in your prayers. Uh, we've got opportunities coming up faster than we know what to do with them. We're already in Philadelphia, the Philippines, and Brazil. Uh, possibility we'll be heading to Cambodia with Reignite Hope maybe Mexico with Reignite Hope. On top of that, we'll probably start Dallas this year, maybe Las Vegas this year, uh, not to mention having a second 18-wheeler all over Southern California. So uh, we believe in prayer. We know it works. So, so pray for us, if you would. We'd, we'd, uh, we'd love to have that. Well, we, we appreciate that, Steve. So um, everyone, thanks for listening. Thanks for coming on, Steve. If you guys uh, are out there listening to this and you could Find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere else you can listen. So once again, thanks for listening to the Dustin Jobs Podcast. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thanks for listening to the Dusty Jobs Podcast. Breathe better, work safer.